if you are let's say captain of a ship sailing do you want to be winds on your side rather than sailing against the winds and you say i'll change the winds Hey guys, welcome to Backstage with Millionaires. I'm Caleb, your host, and today the guest that we have on the show is Siddhartha. He's the head of community at Prime Venture Partners, and he's also the host of 100X Entrepreneur Podcast. Um, but before this period of his career uh, with Prime Venture Partners, he actually spent six years building two of his own startups. Uh, so to start the interview, Siddhartha, um, I'm curious to know what were those six years like, and then what were the biggest takeaways um, at the end of those six years when you finally uh, sold your second startup? so i would say you know the six years what a, a nightmarish ride <laughs> being an entrepreneur is not an easy work you have interviewed so many entrepreneurs it's always like 365 days a year 360 days is pure hell five days of you know joy you may get that's also not guaranteed uh, so my first startup was adodoc that was an electronic medical record system uh, we scaled it to around 500000 patients who were using the electronic medical records and uh, 100 doctors were entering those records uh, and we started in a small tier 2 city called merit and we did that for 2 years and then we raised venture capital from some of the known angels like rajul garg of leo capital dr anurudh malpani from malpani ventures and after that we pivoted because the market was not so big <laughs> that's one learning of mine which i like to share you know like if you want to focus on building a very large business which is to be you know we want vcs money in it start with the market first i mean wh- wh- why was it that you i guess it was your first time as an entrepreneur yes, right yes uh, yeah. because as a, f- a first time entrepreneur you are just passionate about solving a problem and healthcare was you know deep to my heart uh, it goes back to my own personal story like when i was 8 years old a uh, pediatrician in merit uh, gave me wrong medicines i had typhoid he treated me for malaria and because of those incorrect medical records i had severe allergies oh my god so that's what there was sub, something subconscious in my mind that i want to solve for healthcare and that's how my first venture started and then you decided to pivot um and what direction did you guys pivot in so we were you know building b2b solution providing doctors electronic medical records which were then being accessed by the patients primarily the mothers of the kids we then focus you know we are sitting in clinics what can we do to, uh to help these mothers more so when we intra- interacting with these mothers they said there is a one big problem which you know the doctors are not able to solve they need more time to for their kids problems a new mother uh, today i'm a father of a 4 month old son so you know i get this all the time I realize this myself a new mother or new parent faces thousands of questions regarding a child's health or nutrition and then she cannot ring the doctor every time So that's why we decided to build a community called Baby Go Go, where mothers could interact with each other and with the doctors on the platform, where they could get their queries answered in two minutes. Within, I think, a short period of one and a half years, we had one million questions asked on the platform with three million answers. That's when you know that there's a serious need for a platform yes. like this, hey? Then we had, you know, after being six years uh, as an entrepreneur, we had an acquisition offer in 2017 from Shiro's. it's back september 2017 and then we said hey um, it's a good offer and then we get to a larger platform she rose was a women community so we were focused on a mother or a parent community for, where the lifetime of the community is four years she rose is a community for entire women's lifetime and have thousand communities on the platform it's a g- great opportunity so you took it yes. and then uh, at what point did prime venture partners uh, become a part of your life So between both of my ventures there was one common theme you know when i pivoted from adodoc to baby gogo the re- the reception i got from vcs was that you know you should try to build for a bigger market a much larger market i couldn't understand the vc mindset <laughs> as big as an entrepreneur you're so focused on your venture you said this is the best thing this is the best thing the world has ever seen why the other guy is not able to understand my point of view so i started a podcast called 100x entrepreneur where i was only interviewing vcs and so one hour deep conversation i have done it with more than 50 or 100 vcs today and it's understanding the mind of a vc how they think how they operate what are the things they are looking for so this is for my learning if i share with audience you know well and good but i'll be better off learning from them and it's been one and a half year and i thought you know the kind of learnings i have have let's you know try to go on the other side of the table 
Uh, so I, you know, prime venture partners happened when I was interviewing Amit Somani on the podcast. He's one of the managing partners at Prime, and then we teamed up. So as a, this is exciting for me because as a, you know, co- fellow content creator, um, you know, I mean, in a way, you are sort of being an entrepreneur when you create um, sort of a media property like Absolutely. that, right? So what what were the early days of Hundred X Entrepreneur like? I mean. Did you ever think that it would take off to the extent that it has? I mean, now you have how many how many uh, listeners do you have on the podcast? Uh, every episode get around ten thousand listeners, which is you know that's crazy. I mean, I mean, you know, we we get a <laughs> we get like what is it like? A, I mean, two hundred on a good day, three hundred, four hundred, but like you know, ten thousand would be amazing, right? So, um, but when it started, obviously, it was just was it just you and like a mic and yes, it was just me and recording on my phone, not even a mic. Oh wow! So you'd put the phone in between you yes. and the on the first five episodes, I did, did that and shared it on the Google Drive. I didn't knew what the podcasting was, yeah. what the podcast industry was one and a half years ago. So and then were, was the reception good? Like, were the VCs that were coming on the show were they kind of like when they saw the phone were they kind of skeptical or were they pretty much like? On board with the idea. So initial few episodes were tough because you know I thought, hey, I have been a successful entrepreneur. <laughs> yeah, I can still you know get your time, but uh, people were being receptive. You know what is going to be used for. But once I had around 10, 15 episodes, and uh, VCs when they can they are seeing their friends on the podcast, then they said, hey, why not let me give it a try? And today I know I receive mails from other VCs that can can we be covered. On hundred X Entrepreneur podcast. So you've, I guess you, you were saying that you've uh, interviewed about, or maybe even more than a hundred VCs at this point. Um, so I'm curious to know what what has been what have, what have been some of the themes that have run throughout the conversations that you've had with with VCs. So there are a few factors which run common in a VC focused business. First is every VC is looking for a large market, and which is not yet discovered because if it's discovered, then everybody's jumping onto it. So, for example, you know, when Flipkart started in 2008, there was no e-commerce as such. There was no market called e-commerce. Flipkart, I would say, you know, built that market ground up. So, one interesting learning for me was, you know, uh, markets are being built by entrepreneurs. It's not that uh, there are huge markets lying out there and you just go and build out your venture in it. And if you want to generate returns as a venture capitalist, uh, you have to focus on the micro trends, which can lead to a large market. It's also a risk on the part of a VC and an entrepreneur themselves. But you know, typically things play out in the future. They are not currently available on a hot plate for you right now. Sure. And uh, one more example is Misho. When it got started in 2014, 2015, there was no social e-commerce in that time. Uh, Misho built the social e-commerce, so the VCs would took bet on it. Are today riding on 100x returns yeah. <laughs> as we speak, but it's it's hard, right? Like it, I think it's really hard. Um, you know, I know a lot of young entrepreneurs who they want to discover an opportunity, like a gold mine, right? Like they're they're digging, they're digging. But when you really when you commit to something like that, right? You're pouring in your own money. You're maybe even raising funds from your family members, and you're just crossing your fingers, hoping that this is going to take off. But there's, I mean, it's probably like one in a million chance, right? Or like one in, at least one in a thousand or one in 10,000 chance that this is actually going to become the next flip card or it's going to become the next, you know, this thing, Zomato, whatever. Like you, you really don't, you really don't know, right? So you are right. So you don't know whether it will be, become huge and you can't build that for it to become huge. So what you have to focus on as an entrepreneur, what I started was my passion in healthcare, that it has to be a problem that you faced or you observed very closely and a problem that you can't sleep over. You know, it's the problem that keeps you waking for, let's say, 100 days together. And then you think, you know, this this needs to be solved because there's no solution out there. And you have tried like n number of things, but you can't get the wow experience of, you know, that problem getting solved. So, uh, so then it's up to you, you know, to take that plunge and solve it yourself. Yeah. And once you think that, you know, okay, there are enough number of customers to take that thing on, then you build on that vision. It was not that Flipkart was the giant born on day one. It was selling books. That was the founder, the, the problem that they faced. They wanted to sell books. It's such a, like a narrow scope, right? Like, I mean, they, they just had, probably at that time, they had no clue, right? They really had no clue. So the founders didn't knew also that it was become this big. Else, 
all their friends who they pitched to would have joined <laughs> and become millionaires today. Exactly, yeah. But the founders were just passionate about it. And I think you make your own luck in some way just by being able to, you know, keep on that problem for a very long period of time. Sure. They committed to Flipkart for the ten, next 10 years mm -hmm. after starting. And most people don't know, there was all, also a third co-founder <laughs> in Flipkart who jumped off the ship after 50, 60 days. Really? I didn't know that. Oh, that guy must be... Feeling sorry. <laughs> feeling very sorry. But yes, coming back to your thing, you make your own luck, I think. And somehow the circumstances have to come together for it to happen. And very good entrepreneurs are observant. They are observant of market trends, how products are being used. For example, again, coming back to the Misho and other social commerce apps. So these entrepreneurs are very observant how people are already selling on WhatsApp. So you have to be observant of things happening around you, the micro trends, what are the things people are people using, the distribution channels. I think at the beginning, this is what I hear from a lot of entrepreneurs, like um, just coming to mind right now, Vogo, right? They, they were just, you know, there in the city driving around, realizing that this was a problem that needed a solution, right? And this was something that they were facing in their own daily lives. The worst startups are those which are built in garages without interacting with a single customer. Right, exactly. <laughs> An entrepreneur thinks this is a problem in his mind without interacting with a single customer and continues to build for it. In the, in the future, um, you know, if you did it all over again, and, and that's actually a question I want to ask yeah. you, are you ever going to jump back into entrepreneurship? Um, Absolutely. You, you think uh, so? It's, it's a crazy ride. Yeah. <laughs> so you, and, but, you know, it's, it's, it, it, it's so much learning, I would say, and I'll just do it for the sake of learning again. Yeah, yeah, and, and especially now, I think, with, with the foundation that you've built, not only from 100X Entrepreneur, but also, you know, being the head of community at, at uh, Prime Venture Partners, um, I think you've, you've probably learned so much more than you knew when you, when you started your first Absolutely. startup, right? So there are mistakes I would never commit. <laughs> you know, because I hear from so many, I mean, a lot of people start up while they're in college or just after they graduate. Where they have no clue, right? Like they really don't have any idea. Maybe they're watching a YouTube channel like, like this one or you're, they're listening to a podcast like yours. But like there's a real big difference between experience and, you know, sort of just absorbing something on the internet. So I would say, you know, whenever you are doing your startup, Always, you know, the gyan available on the podcast is very helpful sure. on the videos also. Yeah. But you have to apply that. It's not that you are listening to 50 podcasts in a week and you say, aha, I've got that. Now I'm a pro entrepreneur. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you have to keep on applying it, keep on fine tuning your strategy. Because what will teach you the best is your own experience as an entrepreneur. Nothing is going to be better. So it's, I guess, you know, taking everything that we've talked about so far, it's, you know, one, there's a bit of luck involved. There's also a lot of persistence, right? You can't back out after, like you were saying, the flip cart story, right? Where after a couple of days or a couple of weeks or months when things aren't going well, you can't just back out, right? You have to fully commit, even if it doesn't look like it's going to amount to anything. Um, and then also, of course, there's skill, right? Maybe the older, or more experienced you are, the better able you're going to be. Uh, when, when these challenges do come, you will be able to face them a little bit more um, easily, right? Just because you have more experience under your belt. And what are some of the other things that maybe someone who's watching this video right now, they're a young entrepreneur, budding entrepreneur, first time entrepreneur, um, you know, what is, what is some advice that you would give to them? Maybe, maybe the biggest piece of advice besides the things that we've already, that we've already talked about. So I would say entrepreneurs, even in my case, usually don't prepare so much before starting up. So I would say, you know, think of this as a five, 10 year journey. Save well enough, you know, before you even take the first plunge. So you should have a couple of runway for two, three years. And I would say do a customer research for nine to ten months. Most people don't do it. You know, the best of the entrepreneurs, if you see when they are starting again, like Kunal Shah, he was on Twitter running polls from 2016 to 2018 wow. before he started the first line of code for CRED. And figuring out, is that the exact problem that you want to solve? Or the, is the customer facing a different problem? and interact with a large customer base, thousand people at least, mm -hmm. to know that, you know, when you give out your solution, at least these thousand people and in their network, again, 10,000 people will start using your product. Yeah, You will save yourself a lot of time, a lot of headache of pivoting again. I think the biggest problem which when entrepreneurs start is the attachment to the idea, right? So they forget the rest of the world or the, what the, even the customer is saying. 
and just focus on that idea and keep on building it. So that 9 to 12 months of research would save you the pain of, you know, having an attachment to an idea and letting it go. Yeah. Because most entrepreneurs just stick to that for the next two, three years and see that idea fail. I think that's one of the reasons why many startups fail because the entrepreneur is so much passionate about a single idea which that he just jumps into it without even asking the first customer if yeah. he's going to buy it. It's hard though, right? Because, I mean, on the one hand, you do need to commit to your idea, right? You need to make sure that you're not being sort of swayed by the winds of people's opinions, people's advice, like, but on the other hand, maybe you do need to change, right? Maybe you do need to pivot. You need to, you know, maybe listen more to the customer, listen more to your friends who have more knowledge than you do, right? So it's this hard balance or this hard position that I think a lot of entrepreneurs find themselves in where things aren't working, but what if maybe we just spend another six months doing the same thing and then finally it takes off, right? Like, could that be... Could that be an option? Could that be a viable option? Or maybe it's that you need to completely do a 180 pivot and then only things will work, right? You really don't, you really don't know. So I think there's a difference between what good entrepreneurs and what great entrepreneurs. So good entrepreneurs are persistent. They'll still give themselves six months and run out on debt or credit card to keep the idea floating. Great entrepreneurs what would do this if this is not working, you know, I need to switch. And they would switch gears often. Like say, I have heard so many stories, even on the podcast on 100x, that the great of entrepreneurs, they, they keep on pivoting till they find the right chord and they are not attached to a single idea because they know that, you know, till they find a problem which the customers would pay them for and the customers uh, would love to have them in their life, their solution. Uh, they, they, they just keep on iterating and iterating again. You, your solution needs to be one where when the customer sees the solution, they need to be like giving you a hug and saying, where has this been all my life? Or if you imagine, you know, if you give a baby an ice cream, he'll not leave that ice cream. That that has to be your product to the customer. Yeah, exactly. Whereas if you give the kid, say, veggies or something, yeah. that you might have to convince them, yes. even though it's good for them, you might have to convince yeah. them to eat, yeah. eat it, right? And it sounds like the, the second startup that you built, it sort of seems like it was that ice cream, right? Where... People were just coming on the yes, platform. Moms were latching onto it. Exactly, exactly. And they couldn't leave once they were on. It was like, this is a part of my life now. Yeah. You, that was when you were an entrepreneur. Um, you sold that company. Now, you've, you've interviewed a lot of VCs. You spend time with VCs. You work at a VC firm. Um, but you have that experience as an entrepreneur, which I think is a little bit unique. I mean, there are a lot of VCs who have been entrepreneurs, but it's not the norm. I think a lot of VCs, maybe they don't necessarily um, have experience as entrepreneurs, right? So what what is some advice that you would give, just to wrap things up here, some advice that you would give to entrepreneurs who um, you know, are thinking of raising funds, they're thinking of approaching VCs. I mean, I mean, what's what are some of the biggest pieces of of Gyan that you can give to these entrepreneurs? So I would first advice is never build your business for a VC. <laughs> you know, build your business for a customer. And you know you can build a good business when you yourself or you find another somebody who is willing to become your co-founder uh, is a people's person because you will need to convince so many people. You know, it's really tough to break into the market today. You need to convince your first few employees why should take a 50% salary cut or not take salary at all. And then you need to convince your first customers when there are so many solutions out there why to take your half-baked solution because you might want to, you know, go out there and test the, how it's working. So build for your customer. And the, the second thing is uh, build, have a people's person in your team who's good with team, who's good with building company. And the third is, you know, once you have built a company, then focus on raising venture capital when, when you want to scale it. So venture capital is not like an injection for every entrepreneur to scale. Like if this injection can go wrong in 90% of the cases, you can say that. Yeah. Yeah, because... Uh, VC businesses, they want to ret get returns 10x or 100x in the next seven years. And most businesses are not able to get there. Sure, yeah. So, so go to the VC only when, you know, you have built a good customer base and you know that with the VC money, you will be able to scale from 100 customers to 10,000 customers and scale it non-linearly. And the biggest part of, I think, uh, my learning has been you cannot predict where the market will be, but focus on few micro trends that will, you know, uh, 
the winds if you are let's say captain of a ship sailing do you want to be winds on your side rather than sailing against the winds and you say i'll change the winds i have been an entrepreneur and i have become delusional thinking my solution is the best you know but if if you're not ears on the ground the customers will always teach you the lesson mm. there are so many choices available you are just an app delete away yes but that's a hard lesson to learn better to just put your ears yeah. on the ground and then yeah. you can avoid making some painful disappointing mistakes <laughs> absolutely um so if you guys want to know more about uh, Siddhartha you want to know more about Prime Venture Partners or you want to uh, hear more from Siddhartha uh you can go check out his podcast 100x entrepreneur uh, I'll be putting a link to that in the description of this video um as well as a couple of other uh, relevant social media links um also if you know of anybody who you think would benefit from watching this video would love it if you could share it with them and uh thank you so much for coming on the show Sarah My pleasure. Can, yeah, for sure. Really appreciate you taking the time on a Sunday. We'll be we'll be posting this on uh Tuesday if everything goes well, but uh thanks for thanks for coming on the show. It'll be my pleasure. Yeah. Great interacting with you. Yeah, for sure.